It is 9.30. The real battle has not yet begun. Fire! For 30 minutes, the British artillery pummels the French line to create disorder while the army is still forming on the hill. Montcalm decides he will not wait for Bougainville's reinforcements. He will strike at the British this morning. He rides to his artillery commander, Montbéard. I spoke for a moment with Monsieur le Marquis de Montcalm, who told me we will not be able to avoid the battle. If we give them enough time to establish themselves, we will never be able to attack with the kind of army we have. Montcalm orders a general advance. At approximately 10 o'clock, the Battle of the Plains of Abraham begins. It is a textbook maneuver. Montcalm's army will advance in a massive column. It will sweep down the hill and smash the thin red line. But the French line that started down the hill is uncoordinated. And after a short distance, the first mistake. Someone gives the order to halt the advance and fire. volley is pointless. The British are far out of range. The French resume the advance, their lines more confused and disordered with every step. Wolf's soldiers wait. When the French are within 40 yards of the British, they form for their second volley. This time they can see the faces of the men in the British line. French reload, the British take position to fire. Finally, in the smoke and confusion, James Wolfe issues the most important military command of his life. British volley is devastating. A mile-wide burst of concentrated fire. The French line is dazed, but stands its ground. Then the Highlanders unleash an advance with broadswords that can slice a man in half. Joseph Trahan of the Acadian Militia is right in front of them. I can remember the Scotch Islanders flying wildly after us, with streaming plaids, bonnets, and large swords, like so many infuriated demons. As 
the wall of British bayonets draws closer, confusion finally crumbles the French line. of Abraham has lasted barely 15 minutes. Sometime just after the British volley, James Wolfe is struck by a fatal shot in the chest. At the crest of the hill, Montcalm is engulfed in a stream of retreating men. Sometime in the next few moments, he is struck by a musket ball below his ribs. Most of the French flee up the hill towards the walls of Quebec. With them, Joseph Trahan. I was amongst the fugitives and received in the calf of the leg a spent bullet, which stretched me on the ground. I thought it was all over for me, but presently I rose up and continued to run. The British are within reach of the gates of Quebec, with the Highlanders leading the charge they are stunned by a barrage of fire from the surrounding woods and fields. Oh! Hundreds of Canadian militia and Indians cover the retreating French army. First wounded are brought to the General Hospital and to Marie de la Visitation. James Wolfe lived only a few minutes, long enough to hear that he had defeated the French. His body will be sent back to England, where he will be the Empire's newest hero. He was 32 years old. Louis-Joseph, the Marquis de Montcalm, will survive for one more day. His body is put in a makeshift box because there are no coffins left, and buried in a hole made by a British cannonball. He was 47 years old. One thousand, three hundred men were killed or wounded on the plains of Abraham. All will be buried. French and English together in large common pits on the plains. The location of their graves will never be marked. Ten days after the battle, the French artillery commander Montbéard makes an entry in his journal. Twenty times I have picked up my pen and twenty times sorrow has made it fall from my hands. How can I bring to mind such overwhelming events? We were saved, and now we are lost. Mm -hmm.